Next thing I want you to start thinking about is a technique, uh, again, really not a technique, but the, the concept of free versus connected rhythm, okay? Sometimes when you're playing blues and other styles of music, but very much so in the blues, you're gonna wind up with something like this that's very slow, okay? What is this thing? Just about, oh, I don't know, seven, 65 beats a minute maybe, 65, somewhere around there. It's gonna be somewhere around there. Um, it's slow. So if you try and play bump, 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 it's gonna sound great sometimes. And then you can double that. Okay, so let me back this up a little bit and let me show you that. So I'm gonna make it what I call a connected rhythm, okay? I'm connecting to the groove. Sounds good. Again, not ego, I'm saying the, the connection sounds good. So what a free time is, or a free rhythm is, you're not connected. What you're doing is you're going back to the ebb and flow idea, and you're going to create these flurries of things. I always think of it like, um, like you're, you're, you're trying to push this ball up this hill. And as you keep going and keep going, you keep slowing down because it's it, it's requiring all your energy, right? But you get to the top, and then you come over the top, and all of a sudden, right, gravity takes over, and here goes that ball, and here goes you. But this whole transition, like a roller coaster, this whole transition here, dun 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 dun, dun that thing is free rhythm for me. So I like to use that when I'm playing. I'll use it even in faster tempos, but it works really great in slower tempos because you can build this energy by thinking about that. So let me show you a little bit here. I'm gonna go back to where I was before, okay? Start again. I'm gonna give you a little bit of connected rhythm and then I'm gonna do a little bit of free. So here's the connected rhythm. I'm gonna go free a little bit. So you can move back and forth between playing and rhythm. Right? And moving between that in free time. That sort of thing, okay? Um, I always make a joke with my, my youngest daughter. We'll be doing stuff and we'll we'll laugh and we'll always do this thing where we go, ha, 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 So it starts off slow and then it gets faster and slower. I mean, so much of the way I think about anything that needs to be dynamic, I think about that. So, you know, you're thinking about your dynamic contrast that we've talked about before, the way you're picking, all of those kind of things are coming back around right now. You know, setting your guitar tone up, changing the volume, you know, the way you're picking, you know, your your tone selector, your pickup selector, excuse me, whatever it is, we're, we're trying to utilize all of these elements now because we've got this slow, relaxed, 
groove happening. It's not intense. It's not high intensity. So we can use all these things. We're trying to make connections to these chords. And if you know the names of the notes, I'm trying to make connections mostly to the root, the minor third, and the seventh. If I was playing over a major blues, which we will in a little bit, I'd be doing the same thing, but I'd be connecting to the major third, right? Because the, the chord would be based off major, so I'd be going to that major third. Probably doing that minor major twist that we talked about before. But definitely trying to make some connections like that. So if that makes sense, what we've done so far is we've talked about, you know, whispering versus speaking versus singing, screaming, that sort of thing. Understanding ebb and flow, which is really dynamic contrast, right? All of these things that we're, we're making connections uh, to the groove by either being freely connected, which is kind of disconnected, really, if you think about it, versus an actual connection. So we're playing in that straight or, or swing time, whatever it is, right? In this case, it's a swing. And then the, the final thing, which is absolutely crucial, is making connections to those chords as they come up. You don't have to do it all the time. And when I say you don't have to do it all the time, let's say you're playing and you've, you've just encountered something super cool and you're soloing. Okay, so I'm going to go back to a B minor here. And you're, you're, in, a, you're in a zone. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overplay a little bit here. Okay, but I just want to show you this. So I'm in a zone and I'm going... Okay, and I got that thing going. I want to keep going. Okay, all these chord changes just happened while I was doing kind of the same thing. Now, I'm not asking you to replicate that or whatever. Do whatever you like. But my point is, every once in a while when I'm playing, I'm going to get into a place where I like what's happening. And I want to... I want to continue trying to build this, which is what the next thing we're going to talk about is repetition. And I'm creating something, and I'm liking where this is, and I know that chord progression is coming, but I'm, I don't want to leave. I want to keep building, because sometimes if what's happening underneath me changes, but I continue doing this, there's a great synergy that happens between those. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm going to switch. I might be building this thing, and here comes that chord change, whatever it is. So I'm going to leave now, run around, meander, right? And boom, I come out to that chord, whatever that chord is. I come out to a note that connects to that chord or an arpeggiated idea or whatever it might be that's connecting to that chord. And that feels powerful. And if I do that, maybe the next time around, if I'm building some energy, I'm not going to go chasing that chord. I'm going to come up, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. You see, it all depends on how I'm feeling when I'm playing, but... I just need you to understand that you don't have to, you know, obligate yourself to, well, there's a chord change coming, so I got to switch uh, scale, or I got to switch position, or I got to change the emphasis. You don't. The problem is, is if you never do any of those things, you wind up playing the same thing over and over and over, and that's what you have to be careful of.